Today, we're going to take a look at a 3D printed construction company from China that's making an impact with projects around the world. AICT Build stands for Advanced Intelligent Construction Technology. They're a construction robotics company aiming to improve the way the world builds. Right now, you're looking at a 3D printed park that they built in Shenzhen, China. The very first videos on my channel are actually from when I visited China with a friend of mine who was from Shenzhen. It's an awesome city with all kinds of futuristic technologies. So AICT has tons of opportunity to locally source hardware. They've also completed some other awesome projects in the realm of construction automation, including bricklaying by robotic arms. They've accomplished a 3D printed bridge in Shanghai, a concrete house for low income housing in Africa, a cleverly designed 3D printed book cabin, and a small village in the Hebei province of China. Their park in Shenzhen features a wide variety of smaller elements. Some are more like sculptures and others lend to the landscape by forming unique and aesthetic retaining walls. This makes the space far more dynamic and less vulnerable to changes in topography due to weather. If you look closely at some of these elements, it's clear they're using some impressive parametric design softwares to come up with the organic curvatures that you can see. Creating structures like this by hand would be tedious to say the least. Leveraging 3D printing technology for large-scale structures makes previously challenging designs simple. This house features something we've rarely seen on this channel, a 3D printed roof. What you see here are not the roof elements, but this is similar to the way the roof elements would have been printed off-site and then brought on-site and lifted into place. The house you saw earlier with the 3D printed roof is for low-income housing in Kenya. Oftentimes these projects are done as one-off demonstrations or examples of what the technology would be capable of. Many occasions when it comes down to the shipping costs, it isn't quite as cheap as you may hope it to be. In theory, when you build more than one unit at scale, the costs come down dramatically, but AICT was not willing to share the costs associated with this project. If they're interested in doing a video about costs, that would be incredible and I would be honored to feature it on my channel. Take a look at the printer they're using. It's a robotic arm mounted on a type of rail system that increases the build volume. The shape of their hopper at the extruder head suggests they have some kind of mixing action happening before the material is extruded at the tip. Here you can see a clear demonstration of the interior pattern on their printed wall. They say this is both structural and for insulation. I know the Chinese permitting system is quite different from America. I would be curious to see how they did the engineering calculations for this building. In America, they are never able to base the structural integrity on the printed segments, so they pour vertical columns. It would be really cool to see if they're able to avoid this somehow in China. From these videos, you can see they're getting a pretty good layer quality. Like with all printers, the layer quality tends to be better for the indoor prints versus the outdoor prints. But with a quality finish and attention to detail, the character of the printed lines adds an aesthetic to the building that's quite unique and pleasing. This unit even features a skylight above the kitchen, integrated with their 3D printed roof. This is a really clever design for a printed house. The arc in the roof gives you nice high ceilings that open up the tiny home living space and it seems to have all the room for the amenities you might need. I really can't say enough positive things about this roof. Now let's go on to the next cleverly designed building by AICT. Here's the initial drawings for the concept. It doesn't look like much, but you can watch it evolve as the concept goes from a few scribbles to renderings, ultimately printed to reality. The affordable housing project in Kenya was mostly about making it cost effective and so it wasn't economical to add artistically designed lines and curvatures. This project is more about putting an accent on the angles and shapes that this technology is capable of. You can have concave and convex spaces that would be extremely difficult to build by hand. 
there's something to be said for creating something that's unique and a one-off. Even if it's created as a one-off based on some artificial intelligence, like an NFT. You might have 10,000 monkey NFTs, but every single one is slightly different with a different hat or making a different facial expression. You can apply the same principle to 3D printed buildings. Having an artificial intelligence software generate 10,000 homes that are each unique, featuring curvatures and lines found in no other printed house, almost like a fingerprint. If affordable housing can be provided in a custom fashion, I think that would be much more appealing for people versus prefabricated homes that are all identical. Patterns can be imposed on the walls to create adjustments even if the floor plan is the same. With some printers you're able to achieve the kind of angles you see here instead of just printing straight up and down. Do note however that all dome structures do require some kind of cap. When the concrete print goes bad or you're just sick of it, it can be a pain to break apart. This is generally done with a sledgehammer and the experts know exactly where to hit it to most efficiently demolish the concrete wall. Here's a look behind the scenes of their material process. It starts with the dry material which you load into the mixer. This then combines the material with water and pumps it through the hose of the printer. Based on the printer we saw earlier and their hopper, they're probably using some type of additive at the hopper head. In addition to the super plasticizers and additives that they likely use in their mix, they seem to have quite a fibrous mix. Maybe this contributes to why they don't require vertical rebar reinforcement in their building. Up close on this indoor print, it really looks like they're getting some very smooth and consistent lines. Examining their rail system, it seems that they could extend it quite a bit if they wanted to have their printer mounted in an indoor warehouse where it could move from one item to the next in rapid succession. This company also has a location within the United States in California. You can check it out on their website and contact them there as well. Here's an inside look at the wall structure. This whole industry is very much in the conceptual stage. So everything everybody is doing is a lot of trial and error. Figuring out what designs look the best, what things work, what things don't, and how to best design buildings for the future. It's clear that AICT has a vision for on-site construction robotics as a solution for housing. And it's also clear they have no shortage of very clever ideas. If you've enjoyed this video, Make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss my future content all related to automated construction. Check out the Automate Construction podcast on Spotify and every major podcast platform. And also consider signing up for the Virtual Village, my collection of online digital tours of the 3D printed buildings I've personally visited. Every time I visit a 3D printed building, I try to take a 360 scan which you can virtually walk through from the comfort of your own home in the virtual village at my website. Sign up to the virtual village using the link below with the code EARLYBIRD for 15% off until we get to our first 50 members. I'm also currently working on building out a course to teach people about 3D printed construction in an organized fashion in a long format rather than the disorganized random YouTube videos you find on the internet. So stay tuned for the latest updates on that, and if you want to really stay in the loop, sign up for the newsletter on my website, automate.construction. What do you think about the work being done by AICT? They have some pretty unique projects that are quite different from the others that we've seen, and this can also be said about their printer. They combine elements we've seen in various other printers, like the rail system, the mixer at the extruder head, but altogether, it's unlike anything we've seen before. Their designs are also strikingly similar. I can't wait to go back to China someday, and when I do, I'll be sure to visit with AICT and check out the innovative projects that they're working on. Look how they quadruple layer this wall of concrete to form a really thick, sturdy structure with an interesting pattern. It's so satisfying to watch some of these prints 
especially when you get them into higher speed. In person, things can get a little boring when everything's going perfectly. Ideally at this stage you have a person watching the printer to make sure everything goes smoothly. Usually it does, but every once in a while something will happen that requires some human intervention. These machines are still being fine-tuned and improved. In the future, we'll figure out most of the gimmicks required to print pretty much anything we need, and the level of automation will increase significantly. Ideally, you could see the machine printing all of these structures without any of the people in the frame. Moving them to their final location also shouldn't be too difficult to automate with some Tesla semis and electric forklifts. This building takes advantage of modular elements rather than one monolithic structure to create something much larger than the build volume of the printer. I find this space quite satisfying. It's clearly not built as a living space, maybe just more of a conceptual design or outdoor feature. The ingress and egress points of this building are far more natural than a traditional rigid door structure. Companies like this constantly get me re-excited about the future possibilities of this technology. There is still so much left to explore and scale up that we've never seen. So make sure to stay tuned and I'll catch you on the next one.